Okay, welcome for this um, training. We are going to go over a how to, and this is going to be over um, basics of virtual meetings. Um, granted, this is a virtual meeting, so you've gone this far to be able to join. So, welcome and congratulations. Um, we're not going to go too in depth or get into anything that's, you know, advanced settings or anything like that. We are going over the basics, how to create a meeting, how to join a meeting, uh, how to edit a meeting. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. This training is bought, brought to you by the Small Business Resource Center through Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation, and we are funded by the Small Business Administration. The Small Business Resource Center is a nonprofit organization brought to you by the Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation. We are funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration through the Community Navigator Pilot Program. We provide no cost consulting to entrepreneurs and small businesses in Jefferson, Franklin, Washington, St. Francis, and St. Genevieve counties in Missouri. We also connect these clients with resources or spokes to assist them with other services such as accounting, legal, marketing, and funding through loan application assistance. As a disclaimer, the purpose of this presentation is to provide general information only. It is not intended to be a comprehensive summary of any ordinances, regulations, or laws. The information presented does not constitute legal advice. One should always contact their attorney, CPA, or any other professional or authoritative agency with any questions or concerns. So what we're going to start with is Teams and scheduling a meeting in Microsoft Teams. So um, this is just the steps that we're going to go through, and then I'm going to have pictures of everything. Uh, again, this is in the app of Microsoft Teams. So what you're first going to, going to want to do is go to the calendar. Then you're going to click New Meeting. That's a button in the upper right-hand corner. And then in the New Meeting window that pops up, you're going to fill in the details of the meeting. You're going to make sure the online meeting toggle is on, and that means that it's in color and not grayed out. Once you filled in all the information, you'll click send in the upper right hand corner. Now, if you that's whenever you're putting um, invitations to people in there. If you do not put invitations to anyone in there, there will not be a send button. Instead, the send button will be save and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then once you've done that, you'll go back into your calendar and verify that the meeting date and time are correct. So whenever you're in there, again, this is in your calendar, you can see there. So you'll click your calendar button. That's what the one is circling. And then your calendar will be brought up. You can toggle through your calendar on the arrows up there. You can see where it's November uh, 2023 through December 2023, and you can change that, uh, but you can toggle through the dates using those arrows next to that. So over here, number two that's circled, you'll see that plus sign with the new meeting. That's what you'll click. That will open this new meeting window. And as you can see, we're in the details tab of that. And three is the whole entire thing. This is filling in your meeting details. So the name of it, how to test meeting. That's what we've sent it uh, as. That's what we're naming it as. And then you'll see the little person icon. That's when you'll fill in an email address or not. Again, that is completely up to you um, how you choose to create this meeting. Um, if you do put an email address in there, that is when you'll see that send uh, that number four has circled. Uh, if you don't put anything in there, number four will instead say save. Um, the little time clock, that's where you're going to put in the date and time of your meeting. And then um, the little circles there, uh, this one does not repeat. If you want to do a standing meeting each week or every other day or every month, you can choose that there. Uh, the location, um, this is when you'll want to make sure that the online meeting toggle is on. As you can see it here, it, it is in color. If that little toggle were over to the left, that would actually be grayed out. And then the description right down here. 
uh, I have in there. This is a test meeting for training purposes. Thank you. So if you want to put any meeting details in there, that's when you would want to enter that in. So if you're having uh, a meeting talking about next week's menu, you may want to put that in there. This is a meeting to discuss next week's menu. Here are my ideas or here who is in charge of whatever. Uh, so you can do a lot of that. And again, this is just basic information. Once you have all that in there, double check to make sure you have all the information correct. Email addresses are correct. Date and time are correct. And once you're done, you'll go over to number four up there and hit send. Once you hit send, that will send an email to whomever's email address you put in there that you've invited them to a meeting and they have the chance to accept it, decline it, or even propose a new time. So once you send that, you want to come back to your calendar and go to the day that you set the meeting for or you intended to set the meeting for and make sure that that information is in there correctly. And as we can see here, we originally set that for December 20th, 2023 from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that is correct in here. So meeting options in Teams. Whenever and again, we'll show another um, picture of this, but first to join a meeting, you'll go to your calendar and you'll go to the meeting day. You'll see whenever you click on it, you'll see a join button. Clicking this button, even before the scheduled date and time, will actually go ahead and start the meeting. And this will also send a notification to participants you invited that the meeting has started and will prompt them to join as well. Then you'll see an edit button. Clicking this button allows you to edit the meeting, which can include all of those meeting details that we just talked about, uh, the name of the meeting, who's invited, the date and time of the meeting, and the meeting details. And then you've got your copy icon. Clicking this button will change the icon to a check mark, indicating that the meeting link can now be pasted and shared. By doing this, anyone with this link can join the meeting. And here's what we're talking about. So you're on your calendar again. And when you click on that meeting, when you click the how to test meeting um, meeting, um, this little window pops up the how to test meeting and it gives you more details. Again, there's your join button, your edit button and your copy and paste button. As you can see, that copy and paste button is next to the link for the meeting. So by clicking that copy and paste button, you can take that meeting link, create an email, and send it to anyone you would like. And if they have that link, they can also join the meeting also. So let's talk about some icons. As we're on here and going through these icons, you can actually see them on your own screen. So first and foremost, the camera. So if there is a strike through your camera icon, that means your camera is off. If there is no strike through on that camera icon, that means the camera is on. So as you can see right now, if you're on a desktop or laptop, um, and again, this is for the desktop and laptop. The mobile version is going to look a little bit different. Um, so again, most people do join these on desktops or laptops. So that's what we focused on for this. Um, and a lot of times, of course, if there's no strike through your camera, that means your camera's on and you should be able to see your own self on the screen. Uh, microphone, so that's a big one, right? Even if cameras are off, you can typically still hear people because they um, forget that their camera, or their their um, microphone is actually on. So you're going to hear barking dogs or them chewing or them talking to someone else. Um, or on the other hand, uh, if they're trying to talk and they don't realize that their their speaker is actually off, uh, then they can't hear themselves and we can't hear them either. So again, that strike through means that um, your speaker is muted, your microphone is muted, and you cannot be heard by others that are in the meeting. Uh, if there is no strike through, that means that you are unmuted, that your microphone is on, and you in fact can be heard. Um, as you can see here through the participants, um, everyone but me has a strike through, meaning they could be sitting there talking, having a full on conversation, you're not going to hear them. My microphone does not have a strike through, so that means you're hearing me right now. So let's move on to the chat. 
When you click the chat button, this will bring up a column on the right hand side of the meeting window where you and others who are in the meeting can type comments, questions, leave emojis, and everyone else in the meeting can actually see that conversation and what you're typing, how you're reacting, things like that. Um, the raise hand icon. When clicked, this will highlight your video or name icon in yellow and show a hand up. You must click this again to lower your hand. This can be used in various ways. Um, people do this to show participation. Uh, you can vote for something, you're participating in something, signifying you have a question or a comment. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and hit my raise hand icon. And let's see here, as you can see my, um, it shows that my hand is up and my profile picture is outlined in yellow. So again, that just shows I've got my hand up, but to turn that off, it doesn't automatically just go off. You do have to click that again to make that go off. Um, and then your react button. When clicking this, uh, we'll open a small menu of emoji reactions and you have to click on which emoji you would like to use. You've got um, your raise hand, thumbs up, heart, clapping hands, laughing, and wow. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a couple of those reactions. Um, so we've got thumbs up, that'll pop up. We've got our hearts, clapping hands, and those are just used throughout meetings. Um, you know, maybe it's not always used, um, appropriate to use these, but sometimes, you know, when something good happens, you wanna send somebody some clapping hands to congratulate them. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's a good way to use, again, participation, voting, um, things like that. And this is just showing, even though we're on here, um, this is just showing where everything again, uh, it, uh, again is. Uh, your camera is number one, your microphone is number two, your chat button is three, your raise hand is four, and your reaction is number five. Again, you have to click these and click them again to turn them on, to turn them off, to use them. Um, so these don't automatically uh, go off. The only ones that aren't long lasting are your reactions. When you click them once, it'll pop up the reaction and then it's done. To continue that reaction, you have to keep clicking that reaction. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to Zoom and how to schedule in Zoom. This is pretty similar, um, but it is a little bit different. Um, some people have preferences, Teams versus Zoom. I personally like Teams a little bit better. I think it's a little more user friendly, um, but Zoom can definitely get the job done. Um, so first off, in the Home tab, you'll click Schedule. And in the new Schedule Meeting window, you will fill in the details of the meeting, just like with Teams. And then in this window, you have the choice of rather you would like the host, which is you, and your participants to have their video or their camera on or off. Once you've got everything in there, you'll click send in the lower right hand corner. And again, this button will be labeled as save if you do not invite anyone. And then you'll go ahead and verify the meeting date and time on your meetings tab that they are correct and they're for your intended date and time. So here we are here. We're in our home screen in Zoom and then here you are to click that schedule that's uh, circled in number one. That'll bring up this schedule meeting window and a lot of this is the same like it was in Teams. Your topic, so that's your meeting name, how to Zoom test meeting date and time, make sure you've got it in there. Now it is worth saying, um, when you have Zoom for free, it does limit your meeting times to 40 minutes. However, Zoom does not give you the option to do a 40 minute meeting. Um, you can go 30 minutes or you can go uh, 40, let's see, 45 minutes or an hour. Um, so I don't, there's not an actual 40 minute uh, time limit on there. So we only did this one for a half hour. Um, your attendees, again, here's where you'll put in any email addresses that you want to include. And then um, enable continuous meeting chat. That means that even after the meeting is over, you can still be, you can still see the chat, you can still access the chat. Uh, meeting ID, um, you want to put that in to generate automatically. 
And then um, here's where I was talking about for your video. So this is your camera. You can choose here if you want your camera to be on or off for this meeting and also participate participants to be on or off for that meeting. So this is something that's a little bit different from Teams. Um, here you can automatically designate if the camera is going to be on or off for your participants. Um, this can be a useful tool, especially if you're going to be doing a webinar or a training that does not require uh, on-camera participation from your participants. It's always nice. You can go ahead and turn that off. Sometimes participants do leave their cameras on and um, that can be distracting to other people who are there watching. Um, your audio is your computer audio and then your calendar. You can choose what calendar you want to use. This will, of course, be on your Zoom calendar. But if your Outlook, um, if you want to send this out via Outlook or Google Calendar or, or another calendar, that's where you'll, where you'll make that designation there. And then here we are for number four, once you've got everything in here. Again, we've entered an email address in there for someone that we want to invite directly. So this says send here in number four. If we did not have an email address in the attendees field, that would say save. So once we push number four and send that off, uh, we are going to go ahead into our Zoom meetings tab. Instead of having a calendar, this is going to be showing what meetings you have. So once you go in there, you can see over here on the left hand side that you've got an upcoming meeting for Wednesday, December 20th. This is your test Zoom meeting, and that is from 1 to 1.30. So everything is correct here, the correct date, the correct time, the correct meeting. And in here, you can also um, have your different meeting options. So you're going to see, again, start. Clicking this button, even before the scheduled date and time, will go ahead and start your meeting. So that says join in Teams. Here it says start. Uh, either way, it's pretty self-explanatory. Join the meeting, start the meeting. Um, copy invitation, clicking this button will cause a bubble to appear indicating copied. And this indicates that the meeting link can now be pasted and shared to others. By doing this, anyone with this link can join the meeting. And then you've got edit. Clicking this button allows you to edit the meeting, the name of the meeting, participants invited, invited uh, date and time, and the meeting details. Or you've got delete. Clicking this button will delete the meeting. And let's see here. And that wasn't meant to be in there. I apologize. Um, so we're going through, oh, yes, it is. I just didn't change it to Zoom. I apologize for that. So um, we've still got the same icons. Just pretend this says icons in Zoom meeting. My apologies. Uh, so this is very similar to Teams. Um, again, we've got our camera. Strike through is your camera is off. Uh, no strike through. Your camera is on so you can be seen. Uh, your microphone. Again, there's that strike through. So that means that you are muted and you cannot be heard. And then no strike through for your microphone is you are unmuted and you can be heard. You've got a more button. Uh, when clicked, this will bring up a box where you can click chat to start, see, or participate in the chat for the meeting. And then you've got your reactions. And when clicked, this will open a small menu of emoji reactions. And you'll need to click to use those. Uh, so again, you've got your clapping hands, thumbs up, laughing, wow, heart and celebrate, and raising your hand uh, <clears throat> that you can use. Again, I apologize um, that that says Teams. I think the next one says that as well. Um, but these are for Zoom. Uh, oh. And it does say in a Zoom meeting. So here we go. So number one, again, there's your camera for your video. It's got the strike through, so the video is off. Uh, number two is your microphone. So again, uh, it's got that strike through, so the microphone's off. Three is your more button. That's where you're going to be able to access your chat. And then there in the middle for number four is your reactions. You'll click that button to bring up these reactions. Again, there's your hand clapping, thumbs up, laughing, wow, heart, celebrate, and then your raise hand. 
So as for some helpful links, there are a multitude of things out there in addition to, of course, our training today that can take you through these basics that can um, teach you more in depth and advanced settings for everything. Um, so these are just things that you can go on to Google and search. Um, you can look up, you know, how to uh, schedule on Teams, how to join Teams meeting or just how to teams um, and these can provide uh, instruction direction step-by-step -step directions you can watch videos that also provide step-by-step -step instructions and and pictures and videos um, so just as a couple examples here we've got our teams how to and we've got our zoom how to both of these links have just been shared in the chat by Brittany now, as a disclaimer, uh, the Jefferson Franklin Community Action Corporation and Small Business Resource Center and the SBA have no affiliation with these con uh, content creators or companies uh, that these two links uh, take you to. They are just listed as examples only. All right, and do we have any questions? All right, so to see this training and past trainings, you can of course visit our official YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com, you can search our channel name that is at JFCAC uh, SBRC, or you can follow this link that Brittany is sharing there as well at youtube.com JFCAC SBRC, and you can see our, some of our past trainings. Um, those have to do with disaster preparedness for small businesses, cybersecurity for small businesses, Facebook and branding, and then uh, this recording will be available on there as well. So with that, we say thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and contact us. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining.